It's funny to me that Riesling gets such a bad rap. I reckon it's one of the world's most versatile varieties, capable of producing dry wines, fully sweet wines, even fantastic sparkling wines. The problem seems to be the words sweet and fruity that prevent some wine drinkers taking it seriously. In this episode, we're gonna take it seriously and we're gonna look at Aussie Riesling and what you'll find is that they are, for the most part, dry. Let's meet Louisa Rose at Pusey Vale Vineyard and take a walk on the dry side. Hey, how are you doing? Good, Mark. How are you? Good. Lovely good to, to see, see you. you. So, famous Pusey Vale Riesling Vineyard here in the Eden Valley. What makes it so good for Riesling? Why is Eden Valley so good and why is this vineyard so special? Well, it is a very special vineyard. The first thing you've got to look at, of course, is the soil. Right. And, and this is what makes Eden Valley. It's that very low fertility soil. There's, you know, some, some soil there, but there's a lot of pebbles, a lot of gravel within it. Mm -hmm. So the low fertility means that the vines aren't going to be the most vigorous vines that you're going to see in Australia. How does that relate, that low vigour, how does that relate to the bottle, which I see you've got a couple of bottles here for us to try later, but how does that relate to, to the flavours in the bottle? Well, it's all about the balance of the vine. Okay. So you can see these vines, they have, you know, they have good leaves without being really lush. Um, the, the, that, that means that the fruit grows and it's got some reasonable exposure to the sun so that the sun can affect those flavours as, as, as the grapes ripen. And then some magical combination that we don't quite understand of the climate and the soil and the vine and everything else goes into making up the flavours that are uniquely both Pusey Vale and also of course Eden Valley. Now tell me a bit about Eden Valley, can see, see the sort of the look of it here. Well Eden Valley is a region within the Barossa and the Eden Valley are the, even though it's called a valley, are the hills around the north and the eastern side of, of the Barossa Valley. So right. the two regions, Barossa Valley and Eden Valley, together make up the Barossa. Ah, and we're high here, we're about 500 metres above sea level. And just over there you can see, in fact you can see the Barossa Valley floor. You drop down, you know, nearly 300 metres down to the Barossa Valley floor. That makes a big difference in terms of the temperatures, particularly at night. So up here in the Eden Valley temperatures are a lot cooler and at night that means that the, the grapes aren't going to continue ripening. So they're going to retain that beautiful fresh flavour and that lovely natural acidity. You're just about to pick these, right? These are just ready to pick. They're fantastic. And you they? can taste the fruit. When we taste these wines later, you'll see, you can taste the flavours of that wine already in there. The only difference, of course, is that these have sugar in them and the wine has a bit of alcohol instead. Well, I'm dying to come back and try these, but let's have a, a quick stroll through the vineyard and you can show me a bit more about the contours down here. Let's have a look. All right, that's great. great. about Riesling is that you taste these here and it's just about to be like you, you can get that kind of flavor and that purity and there's really not much you as a winemaker do to mess with this is there? There's nothing. What we look for is when we come out to taste the grapes is to look for those real lemon and lime flavors that are so classic of the Eden Valley and as soon as those are in the grapes and the grapes look like this then we pick them and the fermentation process of course is only turning the sugar you know by using yeast into alcohol and you go from grapes to wine. Yeah, and, and it's that's that, that simple, and then we put it in the bottle. You guys won a very special award from the 
United States Environmental Protection Agency. It was a great award to win because we're very uh, strong on our environmental sustainability. Um, in everything we do, right from the vineyards through to our packaging, all the people that sell us dry goods and, and, and everything that goes into the winery and into winemaking is, is really important to us that everything is there, you know, going to be there for the long term. So to be recognised by the US EPA was a wonderful achievement. That's fantastic. Yeah. So what, was there something I could see here that you're doing in the in general environment around the vineyard that would be indicative of that? Or? Well, there's a couple of things. One is that you're walking on it. Look at the leaf, leaf litter. There's some natural grasses, native grasses up and down the rows. There are lots of eucalyptus trees and other shrubs around the vineyard. And all of that goes into making up uh, the, the natural biodiversity of the, of the vineyards. And when you have that biodiversity, you've got uh, lots of different plant types, as well as grapevines, of course. You've got um, lots of different insects, lots of different animals around, and when everything's nicely in balance, then you don't need to be so interventionalist in, in your vineyard. So there'll be a few pests here, you know, a few insects that we don't want, but there's lots of birds around that are going to eat them. And so you get that, that grape balance, and therefore we don't need to come in and use very many chemicals in our vineyard. So the vines, the grapes are much more natural, you know, they, we think they taste better because of that, and the inputs to the environment are a lot less. And if we eat too many of these grapes, there'll be no 2009 people <laughs> no reasoning left. There's no question when you're trying to pick what wine to go with which particular dish, it can get complicated. If you think about people's taste preferences and palate sensitivities, but the reason I love Australian Riesling is that magical combination of crisp acidity, lemon-lime flavours and the fact that they are dry. That makes them really flexible with all manner of different dishes. Now, one word of advice though, I tend to think citrus when I'm thinking Australian Riesling. Dishes prepared in citrus like ceviche or dishes that like citrus with them, oysters, fresh shellfish. Mind you, don't underestimate dry Riesling's ability to go well with all manner of different cheeses. See, I told you it can be complicated. Dave Palmer first fell in love with Clare Valley Riesling. Then he came to visit the region and fell in love with it, so much so that he bought the Skilligalee Winery in 1989. So what was it about uh, Clare that you just loved so much? I guess it uh, reminds us a bit of home. You know, the, uh, the solid stone built buildings, the, uh, the topography, the hilliness, the, the wooded hills. Um, yeah, it was a bit, like, a bit like home, but a very attractive area. And um, yeah, here we are, 20 years later. Well, you've, I've always been a fan of your reasoning. It's just such lovely, juicy stuff. In your mind, what do you think the, the characteristic Claire flavour is for reasoning? Citrus. I mean, I mean, without doubt, citrus. I mean, lemon and lime, I think, defines uh, Claire Riesling. I think you get, in different sub-regions of Claire, you get different uh, amounts of minerality in the wine. Um, you sometimes get some pineapple characters, but the, un but the, but the fundamental flavours, I think, are lemon and lime. Um, you know, and I think that's what makes it such a fantastic food wine. You know, I think anything, anything that you would normally serve perhaps a garnish of lemon or lime with, I think Riesling will go with. Um, anything with a light creamy sauce, it's got the acidity and the, and the strength of character to, carry it, to cut through that creaminess. So light, light creamy sauces, but, but fundamentally seafood and uh, both um, you know, fish and um, prawns, um, lobster, raw oysters, coffin from Coffin Bay in South Australia and uh, some Clare Valley Riesling are match made in heaven. Oh, I'm a fan of oysters and that's got me salivating. Yeah. Um, now, one of the underappreciated things about Riesling also is the fact that it can age, can age very well and I'm sure having the, had the winery now for 20 years, you've probably got some old bottles. What, do, you, you know, do you prefer it young or old or so like I, sort of comparing I, siblings? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think I've got a preference, but I, but I really do like aged Riesling. Um, and there's no doubt that Clare Valley Riesling is, is one of the best white wines in Australia for ageing. Uh, that along with Hunter Semillon, I think. Um, we used to say that under cork, um, five to seven years was about the ideal age for drinking Riesling. But a few people have been kind enough to give us some, uh, some museum vintages. And we had probably four years ago the last bottle of 1978, which uh, was the wine that put Skilgalee on the map back in, back in those days. It won the National Wine Show Trophy as the best dry wine in Australia. 
Now, one of the things I find also with the impression of Riesling, there's still that sort of sense that, you know, oh, you know, the word Riesling means sweet, means fruity, and therefore why not to be taken too seriously? And, and it's sort of as undervalued a little bit, which I guess for the consumer is fantastic because the reality is that most top Aussie Rieslings, up and down the scale, actually, they're great value. Pretty good, pretty good value for money, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, uh, you know, if we're fighting that battle in Australia, then, then all the more so we're fighting that, that, that educational battle overseas. And we, uh, we work very hard to... Uh, get people to um, close their prejudices off and say, look, just, just don't think about what are your preconceptions are of Riesling. Taste a Riesling from the Clear Valley. And in, and in 99 times out of 100, there's a, oh, wow, this is fantastic. Lighting I never, real, moments, never yeah. realized Absolutely. it could taste like this. Absolutely, yeah. so so, and, it, and that's wonderful because sort of people's eyes open and uh, you know, that sense of wonder about the wine, I think it's just fantastic. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Cheers to Clear Reason. Cheers to Clear Reason. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. It's fantastic. The heart of Riesling production is in the Clare Valley in South Australia and I'm sitting here with superstar, although she probably wouldn't refer to herself that way, but Kerry Thompson. Give us the goods on Clare. Why Clare? Why Riesling? Yeah, look, I am totally captivated with this region and as a winemaker to be able to indulge your passions for white wine production as well as red wine production is really very special. And so we make Rieslings of delicacy and finesse here in Clare, as well as reds with such concentration and power. So it's, um, it's a real inspiration. Let, actually, just look at that, because um, to be able to grow and make a really delicate sort of style of Riesling side by side with, with not exactly over the top, but fairly powerful Shiraz, how does that work in terms of grape growing? Yeah, the, the Clare Valley is incredibly unique in terms of its climate, and we have a continental climate, so we have warm days and cool nights. And because of that, we're able to retain all of that natural acidity that works so well in our Rieslings, but still during the growing season, the days are warm, and so our reds can ripen really successfully and, and with lots of sweetness and power. We are quite high in elevation, and so our vineyards are between 450 and 500 metres, and so really that's the secret as to why mm. we can um, produce reds and whites right alongside of each other. So cool nights and altitude essentially is, is what, what gives you that sort of uh, yeah. that flexibility, I guess. Yeah. If, is there a sort of a, a flavour profile that is dominant in Clare Riesling in your opinion? Yeah, for me, um, Clare Valley Riesling and particularly from Watervale is very much that punchy citrus fruit character. So lots of um, fresh lime, lemon, um, but very much with a backbone of mineral acidity and, and um, succulent to the core, I suppose. The beauty about Riesling in Australia is you can age it as well, can't you? I mean, this young version is so appealing, but then aged versions have their own character. Yes, and that's one of the beauties of, of Clare Valley Riesling is that they'll continue to reward you in the cellar, cellar it well. Um, the beauty of having the, the lovely natural acidity is that it's a great preservative, and so the, the wines um, continue to age and develop a lovely, fresh, toasty character alongside a lot of that juicy succulence. And some of the greatest old Clare wines that I've tasted are 20-odd-year-old Rieslings from people's cellars. It's funny, most people don't even think of white wines uh, as age-worthy wines, but certainly Riesling dispels that theory. Boy, when I'm uh, drinking this young version, of I just want to grab a shucker and get some oysters and get, kind of get stuck in. What would you serve in Clare, typically, if people arrive for a visit here? Well, uh, Riesling and, and fresh seafood is such a wonderful match. And um, a little bit of chilli, fresh lime juice, it's a wonderful partnership. That works well for the younger styles. Something that has a little bit of age and a little more um, bottle complexity that has a richer um, palate weight tends to marry really well with something with a little bit um, more fat 
perhaps like pork belly or a terrine or something like that that helps balance that weight. Oh, nice being a little piece of. I like kind of uh, white wines with a little bit of um, aged cheese, like a harder cheese, like yeah, or something. Yeah, and that's one of the beauties of this style is that it's all about celebrating the diversity of it. And uh, it's whilst we're well known for our dry. Um, fresh Riesling, youthful styles, um, the wines will continue to, to change in bottle and, mm. and they are lovely drinks. It's funny because the perception of Riesling still possibly a little bit of negative association with those sweet fruity wines in the past but I'm, I'm thinking there's in some ways a little bit of an advantage in that they're a bit underappreciated therefore undervalued and probably in my mind over deliver for what you're actually paying for a bottle of Nevermind Claire, but good Australian Riesling, it's really not that expensive, is it? Oh, most definitely not. And and the beauty of these wines is that they are great drinks and they they are consistently good and um, and as you say, over deliver. Well, I could sit here all day drinking Claire Riesling, but um, I should really get out and have a look around. So you're going to take me on a little historic points of interest tour, and uh, we're going to go onto what the Riesling Trail is it? A wonderful way to get around the valley is by jumping onto the Riesling Trail, which is a bicycle track. And it used to be the train line um, heading north, um, this old supply train, and it was turned into a bike track. And so you can meander along at, at your own pace, and we won't be going very quickly. Oh, show good, you. good, good. <laughs> well, cheers to Claire Riesling. Cheers. Jim Barry came to Clare Valley in 1947. He was the first qualified winemaker to make wine in the valley. About 10 years later, he started the famous Jim Barry Wines. And I'm here with his son, Peter Barry, who's now carrying the torch for the family. And we're going to talk his favorite subject, Clare Valley. Good to see you, Jeez. mate. Welcome Jeez. back. Thank you. Yeah, well, Clare Valley uh, became famous for reasoning because of the quality of the wine. Um, it was always a great variety, over 100 years of winemaking that stood out as making the best wine in the cellar every year. And then people from, uh, as grape growers and winemakers, the wine from the best vineyard, you took the cuttings from those vineyards and you planted more vineyards and made more great wine. So it was just how farmers did things. They selected the best stock and, and propagated from the best genetics and they grew the best stock. So that's what we did in Clare and Riesling became famous. It's not just no accident, it's just the most suited variety, or one of the most suited varieties. And it was, it tasted the best in the winery. Every year you taste all your white wines and the Riesling from Clare, or, or, or the Riesling from, that we grew, always was the best flavour of all white wines that we could make in the winery. So we propagated more of those varieties, more and more Riesling, and made more Riesling. So it was just because it was the best. Nice, well let's talk flavour, seeing as you brought it up. Is there a Claire character that you think that shines through? Yeah, I think so. I think when I think of Claire Riesling, I think of limes and lemons and citrus and refreshing, uh, in refreshing characters, you know. Uh, tingling taste sensations, the acidity and limes and, you know, and lemons that get to make your, your mouth come to life, you know, and that's Riesling. Is there a Claire character that you think that shines through? Yeah, I think so. I think when I think of Claire Riesling, I think of limes and lemons and citrus and refreshing, uh, in refreshing characters, you know. Uh, tingling taste sensations, the acidity and limes and, you know, and lemons that, get, that make your, your mouth come to life, you yeah. know, and that's Riesling. Oh, that is it. You can taste this in this young, uh, young version here. There is absolutely a citrus element and there's this sort of lip-smacking sort of juiciness to it. I love it. I think I like the term lip-smacking lip juiciness and it makes your tongue and your mouth come to life and prepares you for food. And that's a great thing about a refreshing glass of white wine is after a couple of glasses you're saying, hmm, I need to have something to eat to go with that wine. 
on that subject, I, I'm, I'm tasting this and I'm thinking, gosh, fresh oysters would be fantastic, or you know, all sorts of seafood. But what, you know, what do you typically suggest with Claire Riesling? Well, the delicate seafoods, things like oysters, have that salty, minerally characters. They're wonderful with Riesling because we have a mineral character. But also, latterly, as we've seen the Asian influence come into our lifestyle in Australia, we're seeing coriander and chilli in these flavours, and Riesling really does go well with these flavours. Riesling is unwooded. It's a very fresh variety, very clean, steely, minerally, and it goes very well. A wooded variety, the tactile sensation of oak in a wine reacts badly with coriander and chilli because Riesling is unoaked. It's very refreshing and goes very well with these flavours. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's fantastic. That sort of Asian influence in the, the, the cooking in Australia I think is fantastic and, and does really well with this. What about older Rieslings? I know that some people are a fan of of Riesling Young, but they're not aware of the fact that you can't age it very well. Well, they do. I mean, we, we quite op often open a bottle of Riesling that's 10 or 20 years old, and those citrus characters as young wines, the lemons, become, sometimes become marmalady as they become older, or they become toasty and honeyed. I think what's really interesting about the Clare Valley producers, they all got together and decided, because of the cork taint issues that, that were sort of in the entire wine industry, you guys all said, that's it together, we'll, we'll band together and put everything under screw cap. Well it was revolutionary, it was as revolutionary as the CD in music, that people could listen to great music and it was always the same. We did the same with the Riesling, we said if we put it all under a screw cap, everybody's going to hear the same music, every bottle is going to be the same, so we're all listening to it. So if you don't like the wine that comes out of a screw cap, change your style of music, change the style of wine that you're drinking try something else, but the screw cap makes everything even. Where the cork was natural and there's variation in cork, so not every bottle was the same. So people were listening to different music of the same, the, the band was playing the same, but it was sounding different to the people that were listening to it, because they had a different cork. As we produce it, as we produce a symphony, everybody's hearing it the same way, which is fantastic. Yeah, it gets to the consumer the way you want it to. Yeah, pure, nice and pure. The interesting thing for young people is to find a glass of Riesling. You see the people's eyes light up. A young person in their early 20s, they, they taste Riesling for the first time. And they say, where has this been? Why have I discovered this? You say, it's been around for a long time. 30 or 40 years, I'm glad you've discovered it. Enjoy. <laughs> Cheers, here's to Riesling. Cheers, here's to Riesling. Crisp, lip smacking and juicy, that's Australian Riesling. So think Clare or Eden Valley. Think dry, but most of all, think seafood. Fresh oysters. Mm. Aussie Riesling. That is delicious. Cheers.